Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Sunday the 24th of April 2022. In today's Mill News, there isn't any, so we're just going to jump straight into the stats from yesterday's game. And this is uh, from experimental361.com, is the expected goals over the length of the match. And as you can see in the top left, Millwall 2. 0.4 xg Birmingham 1.9 xg so we slightly underperformed our chances they slightly well they were kind of bang on actually um yeah you can see after they scored we kick on and we get that classic staircase effect that i've talked about before where you have a chance, a decent sized chance every four or five minutes and we did that until we scored and then boom then it kind of flatlined during which time they got the penalty and then we only had another two shots on target um, from their goal until the end of the game and one of them was the penalty so Our best spell of attacking was around this mark here from 55th minute to about 65th minute. And uh, from about the 30th minute of the first half. But other than that, not really a lot going on. Um, they really, tr Birmingham really tried to score at the end of the first half. And didn't really get it. But... Um, there you go. So we will now move on to this from infogoal.net. But I've noticed a, ma a mistake on this website. Um, so it looks absolutely crazy, doesn't it? Look at all these chances. Well, yeah, it's not right because, as you can see, we got three here with yellow around them. And when it's got yellow around them, that means it's a goal and we didn't score three goals and you click on them it's the same one they've just i think recalculated it and not taken the other one or the old one off so you got these ones so you can see where they're they kind of like a pair they're like twins and they fucked it up so they it's not um usable data it's corrupted um but if you kind of squint your eyes, you'll probably see. So it looks pretty even, to be honest, yeah. Um, it does look pretty even. Fair result. Was that a fair result? 98.45 out of 100. So there you go. Um, and if it wasn't for that penalty at the end, we wouldn't have got that draw. And then uh, you would imagine then we would have been very hard done by if, to lose that game, having created the chances that we created um so we're going to jump straight into who scored.com this is the match report and here you can go and look at the strengths and there are a ton of strength for birmingham and uh not too many for me all um yeah so here are the attempts on goal uh, 15 to Birmingham, 13 to Mill, 8 to 7 open play, 5 to 5 set piece, 1 to 0 counter attack, and 1 penalty each. And we actually had the better um, conversion rate. They had 15 shots scoring 2 goals, we had 13 shots scoring 2 goals. So we had 15% conversion rate to their 13. And both teams going down the wings. Um, the shot directions mostly through the middle for Birmingham, then the middle and the right for Millwall. Um, shot zones, um, Millwall mostly in the 18 yard box, Birmingham half and half in the 18 yard box and from outside the box. Uh, action zones mostly in the middle, 
and player positions. Here you go. What's going on with Birmingham on their right hand side? That is very weird there. Um, the right, the the guys tucked in. They've literally got no one on their right hand side. Um, and Millwall playing this kind of. Keith Bell playing very deep, very deep there, and Savile playing further forward, and Phoebe is the 23, so he's the point man, and then you've got Bradshaw and Burke uh, further back. Hmm, okay, and number one, uh, their goalkeeper's playing out a lot, uh, almost on the edge of the box there. This this is the average position, so you know you they do those heat maps. Do you add the, that all up and then divide it, and then it gives you like a spot where they are most active. And this is where our players are most active. Um, yeah. So let's move on to um this the match center from Tuesday match events. Savile got booked, which was uh, complete uh, absolute bollocks. Um, they scored um, straight after half time, Baguna. Then we got Mark Roberts and Lyle Taylor with yellow cards. The change gets made, Mason Bennett comes on, and al almost immediately sets a, he had a hand in his goal. So if Danny McNamara had the assist, uh, Mason Bennett. Uh, actually had the pre-assist. He was, he was literally he was the one who made it. Um, coming down the left flank, um, turning one way, turning the other, and then uh, looking to put it in on his right foot. It changes, comes back, changes his mind, whips it, puts in a, a little mild out swing of his left foot, and Danny McNamara jumps up, um, scissor header, uh, what you call it, you. Sort of Extend your middle and stretch back out, and he heads it back across the goal to Oliver Burke, who hits it straight at the keeper, and uh, it just hits him and goes in. Not really much. Not really much the keeper can do about that. Um, and then we have McNamara with a booking, Jake Cooper with a booking, and then Lyle Taylor gets a penalty after. Diving on the uh, side to get free kick, and then when the free kicks played into the the area, he uh, well, he does get touched, but it's uh, it goes down very easy, and he gets the penalty and takes it. And then Tyler Berry comes on uh, for Tom Bradshaw. They make a change as well. A um, few more cards and another change from Mill and. Uh, we ended up getting that um, penalty after Jake Cooper playing up front gets hauled down and I don't know how Lee Bowyer can say it's not a penalty that's absolute stone wall he's, he's, as Jake Cooper goes to jump up the guy's drag, pulling on his shirt pulls him down like yeah come on mate come on so here let's start looking through some of the numbers, uh, if you look at the top by the club badges, you can see 6.87 for Birmingham, 6.71 for Millwall, so that's that slightly favours Birmingham, that is not much, 0.16 of a difference is really not much. Um, man of the match is Gardner for them, and not far behind was Bakuna. Uh, for Millwall it would be Murray Wallace. Murray Wallace. Uh, low marks for Biakowski. We'll find out why that is later. Uh, so let's just stroll through these numbers. Total shots. Uh, Lyle Taylor, man possessed. Bakuna. It's two. I don't know if they did that on purpose, but they dyed their air pretty similar. So I don't know if they do that to confuse people. Um, but they seem to be um, well up for that game uh, yesterday. Uh, for Millwall, pretty much everyone on the pitch had a shot, except for Keithton, Bald, Ballard and Biakowski. And that's what you want to see, isn't it? Um, 
possession percentage, we actually had more of the ball. Um, weird, 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 weird. But um, it is what it is. We don't normally get much of the ball. And who had it? It was uh, George Savile, 6.5 of the match time possession. And then Cooper, 6.2. Mario Wally, 6.2. And Big Kelsey 4.4. Um, it's quite a lot for a keeper. Pass success percentage, so only 48 for them, 56 for us. Um, Savile and Afobi 75, that's quite high for him. Um, dribbles 8 to 4. Hernandez there with a lot of dribbling. Uh, and for us, it's uh, the defensive players, really. Aerials won 33 to 36. That is a lot. So that was a an aerial uh, battle there. And everybody on the mule team won an aerial. Um, more than one, except for Biakowski. Um Cooper with seven there, as you'd expect. Which he does win the aerials when he's allowed to jump, not when that not when he's having his shirt pulled. And Gardner with twelve though, that's pretty Helped get him a uh, man of the match. Um, tackles. So we had more tackles as well. 15 to 22. And Ballard was 7 of them. Uh, Murray Wallace was 6. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, corners 4 to 6. And Savile was taking all of them. With uh, Malone and Jed Wallace out. Um, dispossessed 13 to 4. So, wow. This was us basically having the ball taken off you. So with the dribbling that they're doing, you can see Hernandez had the most dribbles. The Elves had the most dispossessed because as you're dribbling, it's easy to just someone to walk in and nick the ball off you uh, if you don't do it right. Um, so there you go. There's, them's the numbers. Now let's have a little look at uh, the numbers in uh, full bit more detail so here you can see the highest rated players for Millwall 7.69 to Mario Wallace 7.22 Danny Ballard 7.19 Oliver Burke 7.06 Jake Cooper we have four players with seven and above um, let's see the three substitutes are at the bottom as you would expect a bit harsh on Mason Bennett because he Basically set up that goal where he's still 6.09 rating. Um, yeah, so let's have, so like I said, Bart Bukowski, the lowest rated player below all of the subs, 5.95. Now, why would that be? Well, it's probably because the number of shots on targets and a number of goals. So let's have a look. This is Birmingham, how many shots they had. So they had all these, they only had five players having shots. Uh, as was it um, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 so they had 15 shots but how many were on target? 3 ah here we go so they had 3 shots on target and they scored 2 goals so that's not good if you're a goalkeeper if you have 3 shots um, to, to save and the opposition scored 2 um, what is that? 66.6% .6 uh, failure rate or thirty three point three success rate. Um and if you compare that with our situation, so we had two, four, five, six, seven, eight. We had eight shots on target and we only scored two goals. So obviously that's a lot better for their goalkeeper. Um so he was busier but better. And that's uh, that's around what was that twenty five percent? Um. So yeah, that's why Bart Kelsey score so low. Three shots at you, and two of them go in. Um. So who have the most touches for me or? 77 Murray Wallace, a whole 20 more uh, to, than Danny Ballard the next, and then 
Jay Cooper and then George Savile and then it drifts, uh, drifts down. Um, and this is not working again this week. Fantastic. So this is all we have. Um, so let's look again at the shots and shots on target. So all of these, eight, we've got eight players having shots for Millwall. And how many are actually on target? So we have six. So George Savile and Danny McMurray had shots that were not on target. Oliver Burke one on one scored a goal. Fantastic. Jay Cooper one on one. Mario Wallace one on one. Hutchinson two on one. Benekfobi two and two. That's good. One of them was a penalty that he scored. Fantastic penalty. Um and then Bradshaw three and two. Uh, I just thought there was a there was a one chance that Bradshaw would have been better off. Uh, the angle was a bit cute. It would have been better off sending it back across the goal to a phobia who was there waiting. Uh, but I think Bradshaw's got his scoring boots on now, and he's got the eye for goals, so he does really like taking shots now. But um, there you go. Um, so that's it for the. Um, statistical roundup from yesterday's game. I just want to sh end the video on this, and by showing this, it's uh, so it's the under twenty three's fixtures now. Um, by the time you read this, uh, watch this video, it will probably be uh, Monday. So I'm letting you know now about a game on Tuesday night. Tuesday night, as it stands now, maybe they'll change it tomorrow. I don't know. But Mill under twenty threes are due to travel up to Sheffield United under twenty threes, and the game is scheduled to be played at Bramall Lane with a seven o'clock kickoff. Now, given the situation between the two clubs, I mean, you would imagine that Sheffield United, if they had their heads screwed on, would probably change that to somewhere else. I don't know if they can. Um, well, they would, but you. If, if I was Millwall, if I was in the situation with Millwall and had a say in it, I would do. I would move it to Millwall's training ground. Uh, certainly, because you might. I'm not saying anything, but um, maybe some of. The, I'm not saying this would happen, but if the under twenty threes go up there and uh, kind of churn up the pitch a bit um, purposely. Or accidentally on purpose, um, just to make it kind of unplayable for their next game, which are our home game, which I believe is against Fulham. Now that's a, a way away; it's in two weeks. So you would imagine, um, if if any damage is done there, they'll probably be able to fix it by then. But why would you risk it? I won't risk it. Um, but there you go. So, um. We'll see if it's still at Bramwell Lane. If it is, uh, any of you live up that way, uh, Sheffield United, if, if you're at uni up there or, or whatnot, uh, Sheffield United, Bramwell Lane, uh, Tuesday, April the 20, 26th, 7 o'clock kickoff, and I'll let you know tomorrow if they if they have changed it or not, or if it's still on. But uh, there you go, and that is it for this video. Thank you for watching, and good.